one day I'll change my <laughs> image. No, one day. No. Never. One day. Is it time? Can we start? Yeah. I am confused, guys. Why the kind of fuzzles? I have roofers here. Dogs? And currently their hammer noises are coming from under me. Like, how? Well, you see, sound moves through mediums, and sometimes the vibrations will move through the walls of your house into the floor, and you might hear your floor vibrate. I was gonna ask, did you just hire Australian no. roofers? <laughs> Jake, kick us off. Okay! Where last we left the... Hopes of the Libreval, the six different, the six individuals who once were seven that went into the Argent Fane to put a stop, or hopefully put a stop, to whatever rituals the Sanguarian Court had in mind for the nation of Rhodium, or the, the land that would become the nation of Rhodium. Through a tandem of haranguing of their of the leader, Zacchaeus Karamir, within a realm that seems, in retrospect, to have defied time, as well as out on the material plane proper, through those combined measures, they were able to defeat Karamir and scatter the Sanguarian and the resulting sunlight returning, the normalcy returning to the land caused a caused an untenable uh, loss for the Sanguarian judges holding the fort above them. It was revealed that Anton was lost in their delve, unfortunately. But more, all, moreover, my, my into bad, the guys. point. <laughs> Might be. Yeah, a little bit. But that's what has happened. The question that now rests on so many, uh, so many people's minds is, what is going to happen? What comes next for the hopes of the Libreval? I believe I can start with a couple of our a couple of our members at once. Let's go ahead and start with uh, Splash and Rockman Jones as your epilogue. Where does your where does your epilogue take you? Where where does the story go from here for your two characters? Well, I like to think that for Splash and Rockman Jones, they're kind of free form. They can go where they need to, do whatever they need to, be whatever they need to be. So we're not exactly beholden to any one area in particular. They would, however, at least try to stay and rebuild a little bit. At least I think Splash would like to stay and rebuild a little bit. So. If you would like for Splash and Rockman, or at least Splash, to be around for the recovery of the na uh, the recovery of the nation, he would be. Okay. Rockman Jones would be willing to help rebuild as well, or specifically train troops properly, people how to defend themselves, in case they okay. need to. I can say that uh, with near certainty that if that if that is a role that you wished to take you wish for him to take up uh, there would certainly be more 
there would certainly be more opportunities uh, down the line. Uh, besides the compensation that you guys are offered, the suggestion that Marin overheard uh, from Verena about the granting of titles and land in this nation that is to be rebuilt. The Sanguarian judges had control of territories all across all across the map here. From Lady from Lady Isabel's holdings up in Westcliff past Eamon Clare and on the northern side of the river. But to focus your efforts, uh, it goes without saying that each one of you would be offered a... Each member of your party would be offered a parcel of land around Orain as a personal home, uh, should you wish to return to it. As well as a... As well as an honorary position within the town guard of Orain that would be reformed after the after the battle. Let's however, let's take a look here and see what else is going on as Hey Jake. Yes. Do we have music? Let's get us some music. I can I can solve that problem right lickety split. Let's go. I've been <laughs> listening to listening to the original X Men opening on loop this whole time. <laughs> there we go. Classic nineties cartoon, cartoon. I was about to say like the cartoon opening. Yeah, it's catchy. I love it. And share the screen. You, I'm gonna give you all a chance to guess at what at what uh, game I'm pulling the soundtrack from. Well, I can see it on the bottom left. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Though dwarven troops from Diplion served as the vanguard of the forces on the ground that freed Orain, the battle-hardened veterans of the Lieberval were ready to lay down their arms and begin rebuilding what was lost. Though this would not, this would not be a self-funded measure. Nobles from the regions to the south, along the Argent coast, would be called to act, to lend aid uh, in the upset region in the years following. Two of the more prominent nobles that would, ser would serve in this purpose would be Eustache and Michelle Givadam. minor counts on the southern fringes of, on the southwestern fringe of the lands that used to be controlled by the sanguarian as they would be some of the first to lend lend aid and begin reconstructing the town of orain in earnest after some time and after the dust had settled they would be allowed or rather, Marcus, would be allowed to meet them in person in a public spectacle that all of, all of you 
would be honored at. Which gives us a good segue. Marcus. Yes. Where will the days that follow, the years that follow the closure of the tear in the sky, where will they take Marcus Jouvedin? Uh, as much as Marcus would love to be able to settle down now that... <clears throat> He's earned the reputation to uh, be seen in public again. Uh, he can't. Because Anton didn't come back out of that dungeon. So in however long it takes uh, in the years following uh, the events in Arrain, he, he completely sets himself to the task of finding a way to bring Anton home, and especially with his newfound knowledge of the lay paths, uh, he sets about traveling far and wide all across uh, the Eidosian continent, rooting out not just vampires, but any followers of the corrupt god Meran. This eventually will lead him to becoming the foremost expert on vampire slaying, uh, knowledge which he will eventually compile in uh, a, his manual, um, Memoirs of a Beast in Black. Until eventually, one way or another, he may have his chance at the Battle of Broken Glass. That, uh, that, however, is a story that we can hold on to for other times, I think. One of the individuals you met in Aemon Clare, Erita, the face of the Libra Vow. In the days and weeks following, he would uh, he would return to Orain with several of the families of the Libravel militia, and he would he would ask to pull most of you aside for a time. Eventually, he would lead. This silver dragonborn would lead you back to the chapel, lead you all back to the chapel of the Ritz. I do, I do appreciate all of your assistance here. This. This is not simply a matter of liberation that you have all done here. There is some measure of explanation to be had, I think. And some measure of questions from myself, mainly. What, what will precise? What precisely did you find in the depths of that, of that place? He'll he'll just ask any of any of the party that are that are present. I intend to begin compiling a full report. A lot, but also very little at the same time. 
ritual in the basement. Crystals everywhere. We were shifted into a different dimension, which, from what it sounded like, uh, we were there but mere moments, and yet days passed. A ritual. I should have known that. I should have known that my one of my ancestors' resting places was going to become such a sight. Is is your ancestor that great? That he would it would be a source of a locus of power for such a ritual? He himself in his, in life was a creature of to call him a creature demeans him a person of great power and of great equally great conviction. I will ask you I will ask you all to step back for a moment. As he kind he he will wait from for affirmatives for from the rest of you. I'll give him some space. Same. I may need a little more than that, as you all take as some of you take steps back. As he begin he begins reaching for a brooch that has like covered like the look where his all around his collar and where his neck meets meets his shoulders as he removes it you see a number of magical energies coalescing uh, upon him as he polymorphs into his true form. All of you are standing in front of an ancient silver dragon that dwarfs the chapel, that dwarfs a lot of the trees that have begun to sprout new foliage and some of them blooming for the first time in likely a year or more. The Argent Fane is the resting place of all of my greatest ancestor. Your preservation of his of his place of rest will not go unnoticed. If you think that you may be beset upon by enemies on all sides in your travels. And anyone asks you what the way to what the weight of the platinum crown might might be. Let them know that heavy must be the head, and they will help you going forward. You will find allies amongst them. But for now, you see as his claw kind of picks back up the brooch that was dropped. And he clasps it around a finger. He transforms back into his more dragonborn form. His dragonborn form. There are a number of rich of rites that I must perform to make sure that these that the Ardent Fane goes on un undisturbed once again. you'll be requiring assistance with that at all. I do not expect many of you to know the ancient rites. It would be correct, but it would be improper not to at least offer. 
Perhaps I would... I would take up some of your time, perhaps on a, on a day in the near, in the coming weeks. I thank you all for your understanding and your help. You have preserved something great here. I will ensure that at the very least, my line does not forget this. Does anyone have anything else they wish to pass on to Erita? Or perhaps we should call him by his true name. Uh, or by his clan name. Tinateros. I will be honest. I'm not entirely sure if Aurora is even there. So I feel like I can't provide proper feedback on this. Rockman is an entertainer, not a socializer. Hmm. Hey, what the? Oh. Well, that is the name I know you by anyway. I would advise you to keep on the lookout for cultists of Meran. I do not know what has happened to that divine, but he is not what he once was. It was his agents that caused this. That is... disheartening to hear that one of... that one of Teokos's trusted has fallen this far. I intend to scour them from our plane and beyond. One day I shall probably call upon your aid, if not that of your kin. We'll wait for that day. We will at least know that I will be willing to, to assist, if not my kin. He will, he will bow his head to you, Marcus. They have attempted to place eyes everywhere. Something tells me that they are in keen on gathering information. What their next scheme may be to rebuild after this, I do not know, but uh, know that I will not allow it to come to fruition either. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go and prepare. The vampires are not going to slay themselves after all, and I cannot rest here in our rain. I will not keep it. I will not keep the rest of you then either. And. Erita, as you knew him, will depart. Heading down into the Argent Fane. Flash will look to the rest of the group before everyone uh, goes their separate ways. It's true that we did a good thing today, or recently, I should, should say. And I must admit that I am not used to traveling with a group. Uh, but you all proceed to be stalwart companions. And I thank you for looking over my shoulder as I looked over yours. By the way, are we short one? I intend to find the fairy at some point. I am not quite skilled at extraplanar travel, and I feel that I may need to do so. 
Oh, right. The, uh, the talker. I wonder what the, sh I wonder what the fairy is doing right now. Marcus would like to know your location, Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. <sighs> <laughs> I believe I'll this send you a good. postcard from the Feywild, idiot. <laughs> Don't trust anything from the Feywild, especially not the coinage. Uh, oh, the, ignore the fact that the uh, postcard is in the shape of a pipe bomb. <laughs> That's just Feywild bullshit. Yes. Bold of you to assume that one is enough to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be very funny. Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and use that as a, as a segue... For the five, for the five of you that were present, as you depart, uh, as you depart, Erita and the Chapel of Ritz, uh, in, on the in the northern countryside of Orain, we will head to the Feywild, because I believe that is the jumping-off point for where. We would find Aurora in the coming years. Time. Don't ask questions about the Feywild. T passage of time in the Feywild. Or in most realms beyond the material. Because then it starts getting weird. Yes. Um... Where does the insert indefinite time period here take uh, Aurora? Well, I guess that sort of depends on what occurred because we didn't really talk much about what happened after this specific ev uh venture for aurora because she the moment the, the moment she realized she was gone for three weeks she fucking dipped she was like i gotta fucking get back to work hello uh as to what happened when she arrived back i don't know i don't know if lady craig was mad I don't know if Lady Crane was like, oh, that's fine, dear. You needed, you, you did what you had to do. I don't know what exactly happened. All I know oh, is that ahead. Aurora dipped out, dipped out because she had been gone for three weeks. and was like. <laughs> so as you arrive, mm -hmm. uh, as you arrive in the court of Lady C Lady Crane. You look out. You look out and about in the these almost porcelain spires that have made up the sanctum of of the court of faith. And quite frankly, to your view, nothing has really changed. There are still. There are still Eladrin making making light of the goings on of the day. Uh, there are there are fawns running about the court, running about this courtyard, and beyond it all, at the at a sort of balcony above that's sort of inter formed up by, like, interwoven plants that seem to take on this more porcelain nature the closer you get to their, like, their roots and the trunks of their trees. You see a familiar, uh, form standing, uh, standing. Both hands on the, both hands on the railings of the balcony of this nature, of this Likely shaped, but still naturally grown balcony. Mm -hmm. Beside her, in, interestingly enough, uh, stands an individual that you are not familiar with. Ha <laughs> ha, uh oh. A. What you would know to be a sun elf. One, likely one of the, uh, likely a very highly ranked individual. He 
you are taken to sit down. You are eventually invited up to meet them. And you meet for meet in person. Once again, another a liaison another liaison of Lady Crave. Ingol Gethfair, who briefs you on a number of events, and it's astonishing how little the chaos and the tumult of this this place has changed. Mm -hmm. You are able to resume your duties, should you wish. Uh, Absolutely. After discussion at length of what of what happened yeah uh, um she would include aurora would give a very detailed like summary of all the events that occurred and why exactly she was gone for three weeks and uh there the question that does come up closer to the end of it she kind of see coming the question is asked why did you send such a such a horrendous thing to this court? I'm trying to think of what her response would be. Her response would be somewhere around the line of if he had remained, it would have disrupted her duties and made things more challenging and thus put in a damper into the, her work ethic and she would not accept that. Interesting. And that would be that would be the truth. If she were to insight, that would be the truth. She wanted to genuinely get back as quick as possible. And if that meant just throwing this guy out of there for a few minutes, uh, that would be fine. She would have come back and uh, either, ban either banished him or if she had ordered killed him, she would have resorted to that. But it is revealed. The, it, the short answer is to save time. <laughs> Truer in more ways than you know. <laughs> but uh, that does lead us to the question of what happened to Anton's physical remains. Yes, yeah, she would have looked into that because she did promise she would send him back. Unfortunately, you you are taken to, at, as this discussion progresses, you are taken to a location that is now different. And not in a very good way. You are taken to a place where, in the Feywild, where there is such wild variance of colors, such vibrancy in action, in deed, in atmosphere. You are taken to a surprisingly static place, a surprisingly gray chamber, for lack of a better term that is devoid of all color and you are shown the place where something transpired that you couldn't have anticipated. Lady Kraith explains that unfortunately due to the damage that this mortal's form was causing She had to shunt his shunt his physical form 
somewhere. I see. Okay. That makes a difference, because I don't think Aurora was originally aware that it was his... That Aurora was under the assumption that if he was gone, his body would have stopped becoming corrupted, as was I. So, my be. <laughs> Unfortunately, the consequences of... Consequences of Anton's saving, trying to save you, even though it may not necessarily have been necessary, he did not know. It has cost him. It has cost a great many things. Given that you are allowed to continue service to Lady Kraith, uh... The story of Aurora's is interesting, because... As we know, time in the Feywild does not pass in the same manner as the time in the Material Plane. Correct. What the long, what the wider years, what the wider years may carry for Aurora, and for the interests of the Court of Fey, we may see in the in adventures and times to come. Hey, Jake. Yeah. I have a thing I want to do. Aurora is going to attempt to fulfill her promise to the group. And she is going to use her casting of Wish. Ignore the text block. You know what the spell does. Mm hmm And she is going to make a essentially an uncorrupted copy. I don't know exactly the wording for this, but I know what I want to do, so I'm just kind of giving you the idea. Mm -hmm. She wants to make a completely uncorrupted copy of the man that was once Anton and return him to the rest of the party to fulfill her promise. Interesting. Keyword, uncorrupted. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. Need to check on something. Looking something up. I guess this would technically... Hmm. No, I guess it wouldn't technically be true restoration. Which I'm not going to do because I don't know how that would affect him. How, what that would do considering he was uh, doing the not good things. Okay. And with that, uh, I guess I will roll to see if I keep Wish. Uh, what am I aiming for here? Above 33? Uh, if, 33 if you roll... Okay, so on a D100, you're going to want to roll 34 to 99. Actually, no, it would be, thir it would be 33 to 99. We're good. And a, and a... Actually, no. Well, I'm thinking of the actual physical dice. Thinking of the triple zero as, like, all zeros. Yeah, no, you're good. Uh, but it's a 56. It's dead in the middle. I'm good. Yeah. You are able to, with your resources and with your magical uh, abilities, you are able to return Anton, eventually, Anton to the material plane but there are complications. Understandable. Okay. What kind of complications?
specifically as you send him back to the material plane and as he rec as he oh. kind of returns there he returns inside of the chapel of ritz in the year i i'm i this is actually going to be important how long after this discussion does Aurora cast the spell? Oh, she would have done that, like, same day that she found out that he was not going back. Time. Let's see. Casting. It would have been the exact one same action. day. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for a number, uh, based on time distortion uh the way my dm did it is that he rolled uh a d4 uh and if it's a one you roll a d10 and that's it for years if it's a two uh it's a d20 or 2d20 if it's a three you do a d100 and if it's a four you do a d1000 that's how my that's how I had a DM do it one time. I thought that was interesting. And the number you... The final number you get is the number of years. The events here happened in the year... Two, in the middle of the year 219, after the elves landed. 219 of the Aetheric Age. Anton would not return... To the material plane for 26 years. Sheesh. I mean, wait, that could have been that, a lot worse. Believe that, that puts it worse. at, uh, oh, you could have straight up had him showing up in Orain in present day. <laughs> uh, I don't think that would have been interesting. I don't think I legally could have. I guess I, I guess with wish I technically could have. Oh well, it's fine. Because I know I know normally to do to do that you have to either be fey or have the blessing of an arch fey. Neither of which he had or was. It's true. Uh, <laughs> so. What well, that implies for. A lot of things are is that's going to change all, quite that's actually going to change some interesting notes in history. Yeah. Uh and as one last tidbit, uh Marcus, because I know uh Aurora would know that Marcus was the most concerned. Uh Marcus would get uh just randomly, probably same day, uh, a letter and be like that just basically says he's on his way back. No clue when he'll get there. <laughs> But he's on his way back. <laughs> and that would pretty much be it. Okay. The... The Orane he would return to, at least in terms of time, will, would have been changed. But let's... Let's see it in another way that the nation that would become Rhodium would have would be different. Eventually the land would come to be ruled by a dynasty of king a dynasty of kings. But they owed quite a lot of that foundation to a certain eldritch knight who would go down quite possibly as one of the earliest heroes of the realm. Definitely as one of the earliest heroes of the realm. Verena. Where do the years take... Where do the years take you? in the aftermath of the Battle of Argent Hill. Hmm. 
Would you mind reading for me? Absolute, I will absolutely read. Prior to setting out on the quest, Verena said she wanted a land and title as her reward, and she sought to collect the collect once the task was complete. Verena demanded her right to land and noble title once the party returned turned to our reign. Any effort to fight her would be, would have been met by a stiff reminder of what she had done, along with the threat that she could easily undo it. Negotiations for the land were heated, with debate on where the Hexblood would be given domain. Offers for a title to a secluded valley in the mountains were outright rejected, and Verena demanded her right to prime land along the river. Ultimately, the Hexblood would get her way, as she was granted some of the best and most sought-after land on the edge of the Seychelles River. From these humble beginnings, the town of Fool's Landing was born. The fledgling village gained a reputation as a place where sinners, saints, all sorts of types that would be cast out of other villages could find a fresh start, and an honest living from judge safe from judgment and persecution. Though the rough through the rough beginnings, a small hub was formed along the along what would become the Indira Road, and over time, the city developed into a thriving place of trade. Despite demanding the title, Verena seldom saw the need to use her right to the land, and instead let the city develop without the heavy hand of authority weighing in. The city was a place for the people, ruled by the people, and in that, it thrived. Which brings us to our next point. The town of Orain. Though Fool's Landing would come to be a... would come to become a fairly wealthy and well-liked settlement, there was the matter of Orain's rebuilding. In the centuries that fall... in the years and decades and eventually centuries that would follow, Orain would flourish to become because of the proximity of trade, the re investiture of resources, manpower, and magical aid in its rebuilding. It would become a hub of activity that would need leadership. Reluctant, admittedly, as he was to take up the mantle, in comparison to his predecessor, Marin Hotrin, the ge the once general and commander of the Libreval, retooled the Libreval in those following years into something else. A an order of guardians following, at least in some regard, the example seen of Verena, one of the Eldritch Knights. These Knights of the Argent Hill would, in the years to come, aid, aid Marcus in his hunt for the remainder of the... for the remainder of the Vampires of the Sanguarian. Eventually offering him a, an honorary title in their ranks, but that is another story. As we take our wider scope, there is another. Our final... Our final individual. To... Who had invest who had an investment in these events. Virgil, in the, in the days, weeks, months, and years following the battle at Argent Hill, where would time, where would the passage of time and likely his own wiles take, take him? As far as the passage of time and everything else, Virgil would kind of continue to work alongside his faith in terms of 
protecting those that are in need, being able to kind of dish out the word of his lord and god, while at the same time aiding any and all who would be requiring it. However, after the events that had transpired, Virgil would congregate with his clergymen and immediately start setting up defensive measures for such threats that were to come. Uh, as far as everything goes, Virgil would seek out the aid of any and all, from paladin to clergyman to even those affiliated with the Elemental's Storm. Primarily any friendly storm giants or even draconic entities that would be of service and aid. As far as everything else goes, Virgil would continue to try living a very peaceful life and not really necessarily getting into anybody's way. Though he would, from time to time, try to keep in touch with his original group, just to make sure that they were all doing alright. But besides his fellow duty as a clergyman, he would just go for long, scenic walks and usually spend his time reading his favorite holy books while bringing along a nice comfortable chair. Which brings up uh, another interesting uh, potential encounter. Virgil, in all likelihood, would encounter an individual uh, in his... A set of individuals. A sect of storm giants that called themselves the Watcher's Conclave. Who would likely take your... Who would take Virgil's message of persistence and vigilance to heart. Eventually, after displacement some 200 years after... after these events, they would migrate towards the interior of the continent into the deserts of the Ablin Wastes and to a lonely mountain peak which would remain aside from occasional dust storms that the magic of those giants themselves would calm would provide an unabated and unpolluted view of the skies above Those storm giants would will likely be encountered by other adventurers in another time. But I believe now we can close this chapter on the adventure the adventures on all rain throughout its history. As one trial of Eidos has been overcome, there are certain to be many, many more on the horizon. Will we revisit these characters? Maybe. Maybe not. Only time will tell. Which believes I... I... Which I believe brings us to our last uh, order of business. Where do we take our players next? Mm -hmm. Where indeed? Vegas. <laughs> I'm going to play craps with D20s. We're going well. back to Barovia. <laughs> no. No. We're not going back to Barovia. We're going someplace new. Completely different. Someplace completely different. 
as five. Ferrovia. <laughs> I Ferovia. said that already. No. <laughs> no, unfortunately. Oh, Ferrovia. Never mind, I miss her. <laughs> I offer to all of you as players and as an audience something different. Uh. Heart, I will ask you to hop into the next game yes. and zoom out so that we get a full view of where we're going next as a table. Give me one moment and I will do so. I am uh putting up my BRB my B right back screen so I don't fucking dox myself. Alright. Let's go ahead and get some new music, shall we? All right. Amongst the planes of the multiverse, there exists a city. Diverse, cosmopolitan, and, well, quite frankly, all sorts of, the home of all sorts of intrigues, and wiles. We are taking you and your characters to Ravnica. Let's go! Doggies Let's in disasters! Woohoo! Rambunk, uh, fucking rascals in Ravnica! But Jake. Mm hmm. <gasps> rascals and Ravnicas! <gasps> <laughs> I want to go to New Capenna. Mama wants a Tommy gun. <laughs> <laughs> New Capenna. <laughs> That's got a lot of... Stuff. Maybe. Maybe for a one-shot. Leave the Art Deco bootleg in the meme, Jake. <laughs> you know what? Is. That's valid. I'll accept that. But yeah, that's where we're heading next. Ravnica, the city of the Guild Pact. Specifically, the 10th District. The hub of activity where all of the guilds of Ravnica, the Azorius Senate, the Boros Legion, uh, the Orzov Syndicate, just to name a few. To say nothing of the Combine, the Conclave. Everybody's got something to do. And moreover, there's a number of amenities and magical items in abundance. I'd like to give... I'd like to offer at least one brief scene. Eyes emoji. In Precinct 6. Just off of Tin Street, there is a... There is a seemingly run-down building with a sign, sign printed over the top. The Guild Pact Gazette. What would this mean? Our players' characters will have to find out. 
what importance that might play. I will hand over the reins at this point to Farting Tart, as that is all the material I have for us. That would be me. Yes, hello, everyone. As we has been just revealed, the next venture for Dummies and Disasters is Rascals and Ravnica, a name pending. <laughs> Yes, I don't know. so I think it works. It kind of works. in Ravnica. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are going. We are very excited about this. We have been planning this for a little bit of time. Uh, you will be joined by us and our DM, Le Jake. My dog as well. My dog is excited. Nugget. Nugget DM. Let's go. Ah. But yes, the game will be running will be run by Jake, and we will have our party Wiley CG. Paul, I got fired. You did get fired. Uh, J Frost, Sid Suna, and myself. We will be partaking in the world of Ravnica, and on June sixth, at time yet unknown, but on June sixth. Yeah. We will be beginning this very, very interesting journey. So, if you want to see that, make sure to tune in to this channel on June 6th for Rascals and Ravnica. Sorry, Gaia. Table is fully. Yeah, sorry, Gaia. <laughs> <laughs> hey. But we do want to thank Gaia for being with us. For yes. One shot. Absolutely. Jeez. It's absolutely been a pleasure to have... Uh, one of the crew, one of the crew that knows, th that, uh, knows the world pretty well, I'd like to think, uh, in on this, in on this adventure as well. Uh, he knows it more than I do. And I, yeah. I'm so decently familiar. Yeah. But yes. June 6th, Rascals and Ravnica, be there, uh... I don't think I have anything else. Uh, we don't have a character arc to show yet. Eyes emoji. Yet. Uh, but uh, there will be... What were you going to say? No, what were you going to say? You're the reason I stopped. Uh, I thought that's a long period of time. You know, that's, uh, that's more than a month away. What are we going to be doing in the meantime? That's a great fucking question. One I don't have the answer to. <laughs> Uh, there are going to be a couple weeks where there won't be any uh, streams for that as uh, there is going to be moving stuff. Uh, yeah, we should move in. Aside there from be... that, though, I don't know if we actually decided on something to do. That's... That's, it's something that we could talk about above game. Yeah. But yes. just know that just know, dear viewers, that uh, we way. will be taking at least a little bit of a break. Yes. And that be sure to tune back in in June for Rascals and Raftica, if that is what we decide to call it. We have now had three people say it. It seems like that is pretty official. It's stick. It's sticking for the above game name. Yeah. Whether or not that's the name of your party, well, we'll, we'll see. Oh, the Smiley. name of the party. No, no, no. What is the what is the game lobby name, Jake? Like, the game the, lobby? Yeah, what's the room name? In roll twenty. Uh the Ravnican Register. That's what it is. Yes. That one. We shall be Flex Marquina. <laughs> True. <laughs> We I'd only go... allow that. I'd only allow that if there was if there was both a warforged and at least two artificers. We shall be oh. known as what everyone in uh, Ravnica will most likely call us. That's them, officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boros legionnaires. Boros legionnaires walking up to some commoners. It's them. It's them. They did it. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, do we want to talk about the characters we're going to play, or are we going to leave that a surprise for now? Uh, 
I th I'm uh, more on the line of leaving it as a surprise, but I don't know how everyone else feels. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise. Yeah. Okay. Surprise. I also think Surprise. that's what we should do. Yes. yes. Noted. But Build up the hype. See y'all. With that Look forward to the reactions. Yes. Uh, but with that being said, I guess we do outros? Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Uh, let's go ahead and... I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and start because I've already been doing a whole little spiel. Uh, hello! Uh, you, thank you for tuning in for this extra long stream today. We did Pokemon. We have wrapped up Argent Crucible. Uh, tomorrow you can find me at twitch.tv slash TrashKingArisen where I'll be reprising my role as uh, Oma Tetsuhiko on Bears of the Torch. Uh, provided that doesn't get cancelled for one reason or another. Uh... But yes, you have already found me. I do D&D. I do variety games. I'm currently doing uh, Dungeons and Dialogas week, as it seems that that's what Pokemon and D&D has taken over my life. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's me. Uh, J Frost. Howdy, howdy, everybody. You can find me here on twitch.tv forward slash jfrost747 and over on twitch at jfrost747. Streams are kind of up in the air right now. However, we are going to be returning back to the lovely game of Valheim with the old crew. So get ready to expect to see me, Cole, El Robot, and a few new faces like Callie and, of course, our good old Viking friend Joe Mojo as we go to reconquer the old lands, rebuild our fort, and bully dear Jesus once again, because why not? But other than that, you can Jesus. find me over at twitch.tv forward slash burnout fawn every other Saturday for the Say by the Spell campaign, which I am DM for. Our lovely crew managed to have a fun at a Blood Bowl game and also start a riot. And also <laughs> may have kind of discovered a uh, another grouping of issues. And also, you can find me here on twitch.tv forward slash farting tart every Sunday for our lovely War of the Shattered Sun campaign where shit happened and yeah, I'm be under an even bigger mountain of shit. Who yeah, you can walk. You can walk it off. Yeah, right? Walk it off. That's what we all say, and nothing can go wrong. But. Have you killed the dragon yet? And nothing can go wrong. <laughs> but speaking of which, I'm gonna pass it over to CG. Hello, I am the CG. You can find me nowhere because I don't care for much for social media. But you can find me literally in everything J Frost just mentioned. So, in lieu of shilling, <clears throat> in 1858, the only reason that the British did not participate in a rebellion against the monarchy is because it rained that day. I am not even kidding. There was a plan for a uh, malicious revolt, or rather a delivering of a item to Parliament that could have ended in a malicious revolt, but it rained, so no one went. No, no, I played Deadly Premonition. I get it. No, I understand. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, uh, I'm going to pass it on over to... Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Gaia. That sounds wonderful. Thank you, Zach. I get it. <laughs> anyway, I'm Guy Green. You can follow me on Twitter at Guy Green Three and at Twitch.tv slash Guy Green. Where, if you want to talk about things consuming people's lives, the Street Fighter Six demo comes out on Steam tomorrow, and I'm going to be grinding to become the bestestestest can. Uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. Also, uh, Moogle Treasure Trove is on Final Fantasy XIV, and I want goodies, so we'll probably be running the shit out of the Nier Raid, so if you're a Nier Automata fan and don't mind, uh, MMO vibing while I frantically run around trying to tank those fucking raids, <laughs> uh, yeah, keep an eye on the space. I guess I'll pass it to Sen. I am Sensuna84. I can be found on my Twitch channel when can be bothered to stream. I play a variety of things. But enough talk, Wiley. Tell us about your music. Oh, that music? 
that I just re had revealed on the Maelstrom. Which is mm. not really done yet, but I'm working on it still. Yes, yeah, so you can find my music on YouTube. I mostly do... I'm starting to focus more on orchestral stuff. But it's mostly all instrumental. I'm not making music. I'm playing games on twitch.tv forward slash xwileywilly. I play mostly randomizers. But for the next few weeks, I'll be consumed by Breath of the Wild as I try to catch up the Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> I'm not going to get all the shrines. There's, I don't think there's uh, enough time. <laughs> yeah, no. <sighs> hey, Willie. Gonna tr what? <laughs> if you get all 120... That's if you get the deal. That's if you got the DLC. Uh, if you get all 120, you get the hero of the wilds outfit, which is the best armor in the game. Hmm. I don't know. Hey, Tears of the Kingdom's coming up pretty soon. If, if I have time, if, maybe. At least go back and do it at some point. Get your playthrough done, and then go and. Oh, I, I I question their I question their choice for the pants, but you know, to each their own. Pants are for squares. <laughs> yes. Swiley Willy on Twitter as well, and I have a Ko-Fi addict, Swiley Willy. Yeah. I believe that's everything I got. Jake, where can we find you? Oh, oh me me? Where can you find Perhaps, me? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Going maybe. House? That Maybe, hmm, possibly. <laughs> um, you can find me over on twitch.tv slash lejake uh, on Monday nights. Much like for this game, there's going to be a bit of a hiatus on that channel. Um, besides that, you can find me posting stuff on uh, Tumblr at the same address. Um, that's at lejake. And uh, YouTube at LeJake, which also can be found by searching Jay Stevens Productions. Oh, uh, dog, dog, or dog in stereo. Uh, yeah, that's all I have. That's all I have to show. Which leaves our last, I think, our last order of business. Who'll be on Wade? Who are we going to raid? Uh, That's a good question, Mega Man. I think I know who we're going to raid. I'm just trying to get my fucking commands. There we go. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me look. I think we are likely... Yeah, welcome back, Nug. <laughs> he lost his mind for like a second, walked <laughs> out, and then came back in and <laughs> fucking laid down. No, proper. <laughs> like, all right, I'm good. Uh, it is okay, Father. I lack object permanence. <laughs> Wait, no. We were gonna raid Johnny, but Johnny ended stream. No. <laughs> May I make a recommendation? I see a Zai Masai. Yeah. <gasps> oh, there is a Zai. Watch the hunter. Rise. I can't remember the last time we raided Zai. Right, we will raid Zai. A long time ago, let's raid Zai. Uh, it is in follower slash subscriber only chat, so be wary. Uh, but everyone go show Zai some love. Let them know who sent you. And we will be back uh, soon. F in, uh, soon, TM. For the uh, the uh, the continuation, or beginning, I guess, rather, of Rascals and Ravnica. So thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. We appreciate you all very, very much. And we love you all. And I hope you have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye